So, hi, Zio Spentera, host of Inner Fetish, Z Reviews, Z Cooks, Z Unboxing, and all the other channels you should be subscribed to. Let's not get to the ring bell. Um, those are the Canto Aura. Aura? Like Aura or Aura? Aura, Aura, Aura. So, they're $350. Just getting that out of the way right now. These are tiny little speakers, and they're expensive tiny little speakers. And I almost was going to shit all over them. I was this close. Um, you see, I fucked up. When I was playing with them earlier, getting them all set up to test, um, I plugged in a wire to the sub out, but didn't hook up a sub. And then I was using the RCA, and it was like, all right, this is fine. And it was, it was not fine. It was not fine. Because then I pulled out these guys. If you don't know, these are the iLoud Micros, and they're usually between $200 and $300. And they're my goat. They are the goat for little tiny, I need little tiny desk monitors. If you're not gonna go with the Swan with the Sub, them, or you gotta get bigger and go to edifiers and Swan OS10s like that, high Swans. You're big compared to these guys. So these little things, three inch driver, three quarter inch, I think, tweeter, um, USB input, RCA input, Bluetooth input, subwoofer output. When I plugged into the subwoofer output, like a good speaker should, it disabled the low end on the speakers themselves. But I had just plugged an adapter in because that sub down there, the little Martin Logan Dynamo 400, has a 3.5 millimeter coming to it. Don't question it. But I didn't plug it in. I just had it plugged into the back, but not plugged to the sub. So I had the worst experience of just like, God, these sound thin. They're so bright, thin. But I put these on, put these up next to it. And it's like, oh, that's that's a speaker. These iLods are a speaker. And then I remembered someone telling me, might have even been canceled themselves, saying, you have to try it with USB. Because like all modern little tiny fuck off speakers, they're DSP corrected. Now, the iLouds are most definitely DSP corrected as well, but they do not give you a digital input except for Bluetooth. You have to feed them RCA. These give you a straight USB input, USB-C, and I can select it here. And so this is... This is luckily epic score and won't get copyrighted. Um, but this is though, the iLouds. Now, if we switch from the iLouds to, let's see, Wasapi event to the speakers. So the why are they labeled speakers? They should be labeled the Cantos, but it's gonna error because I'm 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 dumb. Oh, because it's not set. You gotta hit the button, take it off of green, make it yellow. If it's yellow, let it mellow. That means it's now a USB device. Now if I pull this down, the Canta Aura show up and now <laughs> Now they're starting to make their $350 cents. Because now they're not just competing, but I can tell where, because when you, here's the problem, when you have a new, here's a speaker, here's the end result coming out. You're still pushing an amplified analog signal into the speaker. The problem being, if it's got a DSP to control the frequency response and the shape of the sound, that's digital. So the worst thing you can do, and I tell everyone this all the time, including look at these fluids at the same fucking thing. If that means if you're giving it an analog signal, and I was feeding it from the JDS Labs uh, Element 3 here, which is a good jack. I was feeding it RCA in, it has to take that beautiful clean RCA signal, destroy it by turning it into digital again using a very, very cheap ADAC. They're always cheap. And then processing it and then turning it back from digital to analog and then out. You can skip that process if you feed it digitally. So either Bluetooth, which is digital, although I'm not sure how the wiring is, if it's feeding it a digital signal or if it's feeding an analog signal, but um, the USB is definitely getting the raw data, raw. I'm trying not to... You hear the low end reproduction attempt? Attempt, these are little speakers. L little, a little babies. Very light little babies with a little tiny port. These have a port in the front, a little port in the back. Um, they also have a quarter 20 port in the back. And this just says speaker in. 
And that just says speaker out. And the problem with that is it wants that speaker on this side. And I'm like, no, because this speaker's in this side with this DAC. So you're going to have to figure out how to, if you're using RCA, it would be easy to just switch the RCAs and you could have the powered speaker or whatever. I'm even using USB, so I'm sort of forced. I should have that speaker on the right. I hate when they do that. But yeah, little lightweight, three inch, no grill, this it. I don't even know if it comes in different colors. You get this little very pushable, t don't. I'm tempted to push it in because it's so small. Um, but look at that waveguide. It looks like a little JBL LSR with a three inch. And that is also very deep in there. And that is done purposefully. That isn't like, ah, they just throw it together. They are trying to guide the sound out of that three inch with a little tiny waveguide of its own. Uh, I also, I'm using the Canto stands that Canto sent me. Uh, Canto, send me stands. These things are hilarious because I have bigger versions of these and they just make them smaller and I have an even smaller set that's just like that high off the table somewhere. I, I, honestly, they're so small, I think I, they might have gotten swept under a rug. But yeah, these are really nice. They're like 40 bucks, which I guess if you're spending and they're heavy, they're just steel. So let's put this one back down. And you get your volume control in the front and the front is just a button press. If you hold it, it will turn off. It takes a while to turn off, actually. It's kind of a it's kind of awkward because you're holding it for like a like at least two seconds longer than I'd like to be. Press it once, you get yellow, you get a beep, then you get blue blinking for Bluetooth, then you get solid green for RCA, and you're back to yellow. Now, when you're not on yellow, obviously USB is not working, which might freak out your player and computer but it should also switch back to any other device that is the default. So like in FUBAR here, I'm physically telling it, be this device, and when it's not that device, it freaks out. But if you're just using it on your computer, just Windows, or I'm assuming Mac, um, and you that device disappears, it should just go to the last device, which will probably be your headphone amplifier. Um, I'm gonna hook the saw up in a second, hold on. Did I break something? It's not making the go. Oh, because I did break it. Let me just restart. Um, wallpaper available on the wallpaper hoard. There, okay, we, we are back. Um, by the way, I'm using a little FIO, little FIO control box. I don't even know if this has a model number. It's got another USB pass-through, but it's just three actual active keys and then a volume knob. That's the Windows volume it controls and you can press it to mute. So that's super duper convenient, uh, especially when I'm doing testing between multiple things, I just need to lower the whole volume down. But these are impactful as fuck. They're like hitting me. Like if I switch back now to the, let's see, we gotta go digital output, spit if, and then we should be able to hit Now I have these set to desk and I have them set to no treble enhancement. I have them set to bass flat, not reduced. And I know how good the iLoud micros are. I've taken them to on vacation with me and they've been like the, the standard. Beautiful. That sounds beautiful. We're still on epic score by the way. But now let's switch to the Aura. And it's just, it's, it's just a better tuning. It, it, these are old as dirt. I had these six years now. I've had these for six years. And you could just feel that the DSP and the, the way the waveguide is working and it's just some, it is tuned for beauty. It's not as in your face. It sounds like a real speaker. And that's what the low end coming from these, if I get up and make a pluggy pluggy in the butt, here, we'll, we'll, we'll un unplug the butt. Bluetooth pairing button, sub out, which is a single RCA. Your DC in, which is 24 volt, 2.5 amp. Here's your power brick here. It's a standard power brick. Your speaker out, which is one of these four pin wires, actually very similar, if not the exact same. 
as the wire that's being used in the aisle out's only a little bit thinner. Thankfully, I'm using some uh, RCA cables into the RCA inputs, and there's your USB, and there's your quarter 20. And this, even though it's a powered unit, isn't that heavy. So here's the culprit that fucked around and found out. Oh, there we go. Um, the subwoofer should be... Oh my God, this problem with lightweight speakers is you plug in any... You know, I'm just gonna pl unplug the RCAs. These are very expensive and very stiff. <clears throat> I was gonna make some sort of joke about prostitutes, but I'm not gonna, not gonna. We're gonna be above that now. So now what the problem is, you have to go back and you gotta sort of dial the subwoofer in to match. So we need a little bit more and a little bit more, a little bit more frequency uh, takeover and a little bit more volume for this. And what using an external sub allows you to do is not just, oh, we want more beef, the off. It unlocks these speakers from having the responsibility of doing low end and pushes it down there, which means these can play louder, which means these can play to a room, which means if I push everything sort of here, and straighten them out, now it's not balanced with the sub. Now the sub sounds louder than those because it's just a distance thing. You would, you could probably use these in a small bedroom. These are not going to work in your living room. They're just not going to. They're designed for a desk. You'd probably it'd probably work out if you. I want to sit in my bed and and have these at my desk and I'm gonna put a sub there and they'd be fine. I honestly think I'm more impressed with them doing the bass themselves than with the subwoofer. I mean that. That's a pretty incredible amount of weight. Now we're just pretty much re-reviewing the goddamn Dynamo 400 sub, which is a little tiny eight inch there. And it's like, ooh, Nelly. So these are gonna be... Oh my fucking science. This is Siren's Call from Epic Score. Epic Action and Adventure 4. I don't have Epic Action and Adventure 1 through 12, but I have 4. I just want to sit here, I'm like holding my breath and listening going, all right, what am I going to say about this now? Fuck, I just want to keep listening. I just don't want to, un I don't want to pause it. So, I recently did the drop speakers over there, those little drop guys over there, high drop guys, and those are absolutely worth $150 for what they do and how they do it, and they're so small and light, smaller and thinner and lighter than any of this is giant compared to it. But these are better, obviously. They're obviously better. The OS10s, Swan OS10s right there. When they're available, they're better than these. They're also twice the volume and half the price. Can you find them? I don't know. Then you have to worry about the edifiers. These are specifically competing to be the smallest recommendable speaker I've ever used. Like that's it. Kovo S was like, that was a cute little thing. Definitely didn't have any, it was just a passive speaker. This is, you're working with a DSP, you're working with digital inputs, you're working with Bluetooth. They're, they're sitting on their own. I wish they weren't fucking black. Right now, the only place that has a listing for them is B&H. I'll show they'll, they'll come out on the 30th of October. I'm filming this currently on the 17th of October. So I should be able to launch this video publicly when they're out. I just, I don't see any different, like, here's what the port looks like internally. It's a very long port. Super long. Super green. Yep, there they are on a desk. And that's it. These in white would be stellar. They'd be like the MR4s. That's the only competition as far as like cleanliness would be the Edifier MR4, which was a half 
the price of this speaker speaker but definitely didn't have that like epic sound that these are throwing out. It was a very clean, very neat speaker. I actually sold the MR4. Whenever I sell something, I am always always regret it. It's one of those things like, oh, I regret selling that because I can pull them out right now and do a comparison. <laughs> but if you're a patron or subscriber, so a subscriber, you get to buy things in the yard sale, which uh, you should all be very happy to uh, have the ability to do that. Yeah, when you have this, when you have the subwoofer like tuned in, and it's it's again, I just ran behind it just now and did like a little thing. If I got up and down and up and down, or installed a box here to tune the subwoofer a little differently, or that OSD. In fact, Zeus, link that OSD iWoofer add-on for fifty bucks that you could put between any subwoofer and the thing and control it with an app. It's amazing. Um, if I had that hooked up and I could really tune this in and maybe get the, uh, I'm still have to review these fluids on the desk here because guess what? Best desk speakers, link of the fluid CLs, you fuck. Um, I could turn those on in a sec. If you want to see like, oh, I wonder if this sounds any different than this or this. The answer is yes. Very much yes. But, um, you know, Canto is actually, I was kind of in doubt because I heard these. It had to be Expona had, had these there. And I, he like put them on and I was like, eh, because I'm an Expona. I'm going after room after room after room of $30,000 systems, most of which suck. And then these showed up and they were like small. And they had like a sub like nine feet in the corner and I could hear where the sub was. So it wasn't an impressive demo. So when they asked me if I wanted to review a set of these, I'm like, yeah, you know why? Because I want a controlled environment. This is my controlled environment, All right? I got rugs behind me. I got soft ceilings and mini splits. And this is, I'm in my beautiful little cave here. So I can give you the full assessment that these Jesus fucking Christ. That's, you know what? I'm just going to disable the sub, which will make the speaker whoop, and now the speaker will be like. All right, I'm going to risk copyright strikes again. Thanks, Sony. You've given me a fear now. Postmodern jukebox. Billy Joel. Carpenter Brute. Thank you, no terror string quartet. What's Sony own? Oh my fucking God. Yeah, no, they're... They're the best little micro... They're the best micro speaker. In fact, that should be in the title. I don't know if that's a category... If it isn't a category, we now have enough examples of it. We've got, I would say the MR4s are micro speaker. We've got the iLouds are micro speaker. And now we've got these Canto Oras. Ora, ora. Or a micro speaker. I just wish they looked like this looks fine. J just more. Give me a grill over the front of it. Give me a different color scheme. Something. Something. But you know, all right, linking to those, Patreon subscribers support this channel. Wallpapers in the Wallpaper Horde. For $5 a month, you get to see reviews early. I've changed my uh, release schedule to be every third day publicly. That does that. What that means is that I used to put videos on Patreon, and then a week later, they'd be public. Now I'm releasing 33% less videos. So 33% more videos are staying on Patreon longer. Because I'm just making videos, you know, three, four in a day sometimes. And I do that every week. And that's not as many as get released. So if you want to see my backlog of completely finished videos that have are just hiding from the public until their eventual release, Patreon and subscribers will have the access to that. <laughs> By the way, the imaging, I just want I didn't even mention this. The imaging is just a beautiful arc. Right in the front. This, the granted, those are a little further apart and down, but the imaging on that from that big fucking tweeter waveguide, it sounds not to say it sounds like a JBL, but it sounds like a JBL. And Canto hasn't done that in the past. Um, so yeah, ten dollars a month gets you in the private behind the scenes Telegram chat, which you, where you can talk to me directly. If you want to ask me questions directly, ten bucks a month. For one month, you can ask me all the questions you want for a month, or. For the rest of your life, you can actually pay by year on Patreon. So if you want to just 
fucking throw down. I think the discount is like 90 bucks for a year instead of 120. You just throw that shit down and you're in the fucking chat for a year. And then when you're in the chat, you got access to the uh, lifetime swap me channel to buy, sell, and trade gear. So if you do have a set of iLoud micros and you want to trade them up for this, you can go there and sell that. So yeah, I'm done. You're done. We're done. I will link to this beautiful, I called this, I believe, the Lion King Sunset mouse pad or desk pad. Now that we're done with this video, I get to take this off and put the titties back on this because that's, that's just, that's my thing. Anyway, goodbye, star fuckers.